Good afternoon, gang. David Guppel, Thinker Farmer here. It's mid-March 2025, and this is uh, I'm back at the stalker group uh, at Archwood. 170 uh, head and uh, about 125, 135 animal units. It's uh, it started warming up here. We're not uh, truly to spring green up, but uh, you can see the grass starting to turn green. Um, a lot of fescue. Um, also some orchard grass, not in this particular patch, but uh, I've been observing a lot of orchard grass green up to kind of a, a lighter, lighter green. Um, yeah, like I said, it's mid-March, so uh, spring is, uh, you know, is dependent on what the weather does. We, uh, we've had an unusually cold winter, and uh, all the animals still have their winter coats. They're pretty hairy and whatnot. Um, I'm kind of new to North Virginia, so I don't know the exact... Uh, time for spring but usually we green up late March so a little earlier than uh, Missouri and uh, last year it was uh, late green up it kind of happened beginning of April so uh, right now we've uh, the grounds fully thawed there's no more uh, no more freezing going on in the ground I guess I mean it's uh, March night today so that could that could change. Uh, still getting some 20 degree nights, but this next week we're gonna hit 70 degrees, uh, I think Wednesday or Thursday. And uh, right now, uh, kind of my goal is uh, for grazing is to uh, keep them on stockpile all the way into spring green up. So they're in midfield right now, which is a 30 acre paddock. And uh, I split it up into a, pardon the wind gang, I split it up into a lot of uh, smaller pieces. And uh, there might be, thought for a second I saw some orchard grass in there. But uh, split it into a lot of uh, smaller, uh, about acre and a half paddocks. So I, I've been in here, uh, at least a week and a half now. Um, actually got a few days more of grazing because midfield is one of my central fields. So I kind of use it as a, uh, I'll graze part, say a quarter of it or half of it and then come back a few weeks later and graze the other half just because it's a, it's a central puzzle piece on the farm and it keeps me from having to make long cattle drives. So, um, yeah, it's uh, been rationing it at about acre and a half paddocks, and uh, our stockpile at this point is is rotting. So the fact that it's greening up is really good, and from a, the standpoint of the animal's uh, performance on it, um, the rotting forage is not really uh, not really going to give them a lot of nutrition at this point. The stockpiled fescue. It's going to give them a little maybe, um, but I mean the quality's slowly dropping as we get warmer temperatures. The green grass is coming on and that's improving things. Um, we'll go up the hill and go look at some of the manure paths and, and what they've been grazing. As we go into spring, um, right now I've got, I've got three more fields. This field, uh, directly over is called the weedy field. There's another field that's over the hill. It's another 20 acres. That's called Earl's field. That's the remainder of what I have stockpiled. So at an acre and a half to two acres a day, do the math, that's uh, 25. It's about 40 acres. So I, I have another uh, close to three, should have close to three weeks. Um, maybe not quite that. A, the, all the fields are not consistent in the amount of regrowth depending on when they were grazed in the fall but two to three more weeks of, of grass that's uh, gonna have some green in it and uh, that's gonna be ideal for balancing these animals rumens because uh, green grass is is really high in protein in the spring 
um, it's very washy and uh, you need to mix a little bit of roughage with it. If you could get the animals to eat hay with really green grass, that would be ideal. But animals usually don't, they want their ice cream. They're, they're gonna want the green grass. They're gonna be tired of eating stockpile. So their goal is going to be, uh, their goal is gonna be to just eat the green and, and they'd leave hay if you give it to them. So one of the tips, one of the things Greg Judy uh, told me when I was there as an intern is what you can do to alleviate that is make sure you leave good residual in your fall and winter grazing. And uh, some of the fields, honestly, we left, you know, six inches or more of residual. Other fields we took down shorter and we're utilizing the fields differently. So we've got different grazing patterns, which is fine, maybe even good um, in some, in better in some cases. We're gonna have different, different disturbance factors for different fields. And uh, right over there where you see the uh, tractor, that field is a wake field paddock. We grazed that, uh, we, we did bale grazing on that and we utilized, I mean, we took it down to probably two, three inches. So we, we grazed it really hard. We want that to have a really long rest period. We're hoping to get some diversity on that. We'll see how that goes. Um, like I said, pardon the wind gang. But for uh, animal performance and for uh, on most of our fields, we're not gonna take it, the, take it down that short. <clears throat> Since I've got it in the camera, I might as well showcase what happened over here. Um, yeah, so anyway, for, for spring green up, fall and winter grazing, you wanna leave good residual. You don't want two to three inches of grass. You want really six to eight um, would probably be better. Um, a lot of these things I, I eyeball versus being exacting about it. I'm not out here with a ruler actually measuring things. Over here, what happened, uh, we've been experimenting with um, fence lifter technology. We had a rain a few days ago and uh, the animals ended up, uh, the fence went up and uh, they, they went into the paddock that I gave them and they stayed in it overnight. And uh, they ended up, I'm kind of, not really anxious, but eager to see what happens when spring green up comes. They, uh, they really did an amazing job spreading their renewer evenly in this, uh, this area that they trampled a little harder. It's probably, let's see, it's probably 40 yards by ooh, 80, 80 or so. It, it can't be more than an acre area. And uh, in a future video, I'll talk about fence lifters. It's automatic gate technology. Some of you may already be familiar with it. Maybe some are even using it. Um, we're planning to experiment with it this year. Um, but back to, to spring grazing. Um, so, like I said, some paddocks, we, we did a higher level of disturbance and uh, Midfield, some parts of midfield, the animals, uh, they grazed it harder. They just, animals have their preferences. And uh, I mean, these are stalkers, you know, these are not cows. I am, uh, I'm not really pushing them. I am, I'm letting them, uh, <clears throat> I'm, I'm, I'm letting them eat some pretty, they're, they're on probably our nicest set of farms at Archwood and I'm letting them take take the best for sure um but yeah depending on where you, you where you are in the the different uh acre and a half to two acre paddocks you'll see uh well here if we were to kind of estimate the residual here we probably have i mean i'd call that i might call that about four inches five maybe six depending on where you are some of it they laid over some of that's taller than that, but um, then you come over to uh, to spots over here where it was, for whatever reason, it was really green, and the animals took it all the way down. So you're going to have some selective grazing. This isn't an exacting science. Um, 
but uh, for a number of the paddocks, we took less, less, uh, we utilized the forage, would be the word I'd use. The utilization <clears throat> was much less than this. There's a couple paddocks I'd say, uh, well, maybe more than a couple. And when I say paddocks, I'm using that term loosely, not daily paddocks. I mean an actual fenced area that's 30, roughly around 20 to 30 acres. So some of our fields, we only utilized about 50%. So we did different, different disturbance, uh, levels of disturbance for different fields. And that should promote diversity. Um, but anyway, we're... Uh, <clears throat> We'll, we'll see as, as the season progresses and I'll be able to give more updates on what I observe. Um, but yeah, I wanted to, I hope, I want to make sure I finish what I was explaining about spring green up. So right now it, it is not green up. I mean, if you look over the pastures, everything is still brown. Um, but if you look, maybe hard to, I don't know if the camera's going to showcase this very well. It is in some areas, like around that, that tree tree cluster there. Well, that area has stayed green pretty much most of winter, but things are starting to green up. If you look at the forage in front of these animals, you can see there's some green coming on, and uh, <clears throat> most of Archwood is south-facing, so it greens up earlier than, than uh, north-facing slopes in several of our other farms. And our goal, or my goal as a grazer here, is to keep the animals performing well on the spring grass. So I want to leave residual, at least on some of my fields, so that those fields that I go into for spring, gra spring grazing, which is going to be most of the month of April, um, their rumen can balance out um, all of the high protein uh, washiness in the green grass and with the roughage that's, that's kind of left from the mostly stockpiled fescue that's, that's still here. Because if you just, if you took everything down to two or three inches in the fall and winter, <clears throat> when you get to spring and it does green up, all the animal has to eat is the washy green grass. And even if you give them hay, they're not gonna eat the hay. They, they want the green grass. And you're gonna end up with animals that are getting way too much protein in their diet. and. I don't have a good illustration here. I probably will in another two to three weeks of what uh, what runny, uh, what forage that is too high in protein looks like. It, you end up with a really runny uh, manure that's like sheet cake, and it's very dark in color <clears throat> because of how high it is in protein. Um, we're gonna be grazing in the spring. We're not gonna be grazing short. We're gonna moving them, move them very fast, much like in the fall. We're gonna be doing essentially more flash grazing and taking taking just the tops where the starches of the plant are and where the uh i mean the, the best part i was reading uh i forget what university put out the study it was uh it was about nsc's or non-structural carbohydrates which would be things mostly other than cellulose um the sugars that are in a plant which of course they're highest in the afternoon but they're also primarily stored in the top of the uh, in the top of the plants, and so uh, hopefully going through spring with the forage being lower quality but growing faster. Um, as seasons pass, I get better at doing this, gang. So um, yeah, that that's that's kind of your goal for spring grazing is you know your animal performance is going to go should go up on green grass but you want it to uh not suffer if you make a rapid change because the rumen if it's going from hay or stockpiled fescue straight over to uh green grass it's not going to be a good transition um i need to i need to take that somewhere so our, our goal would be come the month of april we've got 300, 320 acres of grass here at Archwood, my goal would be to cover pretty much all of that in a month's time. And then, uh, so midfield, midfield here where we are, this hasn't been grazed since, uh, I don't have the, the calendar in front of me, but it's September, probably September. So it's been, it's been a while and, uh, we'll probably be back here come, uh, 
I'll say come end of April, because this is, yeah, probably come end of April. Um, anyway, gang, um, that's where I'm gonna leave y'all. It's a beautiful day. Uh, animals are, have been performing well. Um, yeah, hope everyone's doing well as we look forward to green up. Blessings for the journey, gang, and keep it real.